Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, leukocyte extravasation. Okay, so in, in the process of discussing type 2 activation and the recruitment of now monocytes by type 2 activated endothelial cells. So we've seen how type 2 activated endothelial cells can start to uh, increase their uh, extravasation of neutrophils from the type 1 activated endothelial cells. But now, what we're going to see is how the type 2 activation uh, changes over time. So when you uh, expose an endothelial cell to interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, it begins the process of type 2 activation. Okay, now initially, type 2 activated endothelial cells produce E-selectin and CXCL8, uh, which help in the recruitment of uh, neutrophils um, by these type 2 activated endothelial cells. But over time, after around uh, 6 to 24 hours, what happens is the type 2 activation changes, it evolves basically. Okay, and this is part of the programmed type 2 activation uh, of endothelial cells. And what happens is these endothelial cells stop expressing uh, E-selectin and they start producing new molecules, basically. Okay, so they start producing, firstly, VCAM1 as well. So let me show this. So they're going to start producing VCAM1. So here is our VCAM1. They're also going to start producing more ICAM1, so we'll put the ICAM1 again. Okay, I'll put the ICAM1 here, maybe. And they're also going to produce another uh, chemokine known as the CC ligand 2, CCL2, which again is going to be put on heparan sulfate proteoglycans uh, of the glycocalyx. So let me go through these uh, molecules. So we'll have ICAM1 again in yellow, so standing for the intercellular adhesion molecule 1. Okay, now a new B is this new cellular adhesion molecule, which again is within the immunoglobulin superfamily of cell adhesion molecules. And this is VCAM1, okay, which stands for the vascular, that's the V, cell adhesion molecule uh, 1. So vascular cell adhesion molecule 1. Okay, so vascular cell adhesion molecule 1. Okay, and you're also going to start producing a new chemokine. So this is another chemokine, uh, and it's this time within the CC family of chemokines. And it is the CC chemokine ligand 2. Okay, and this will be mounted on heparan uh, sulfate uh, proteoglycan that's within the glycocalyx uh, on the surface of this endothelial cell. Okay, now what will happen is, again, you're going to get a similar process as before, basically. You're going to get the rolling, this time, of monocytes over the endothelial cells. So let's draw our uh, monocyte. Where should we have our monocyte? So here is our monocyte. Okay, and it's going to start rolling over the surface of these endothelial cells. Okay, so here is our monocyte. And these are the precursors to macrophages. So you don't have macrophages circulating uh, within the bloodstream. Instead, you have monocytes. And when monocytes go into the peripheral tissue, they differentiate into macrophages. And then uh, the uh, macrophages phagocytose invading pathogens. Okay, so these monocytes are going to... Uh, roll over the surface of the endothelial cell. Now, what interactions cause it to roll? Well, actually, it's not involving any of these molecules I've just discussed here. It's again involving E-selectin that is on the surface uh, from before. Okay, so remember, we have created a lot of E-selectin. We've just stopped producing it now. Okay, but there's still the E-selectin that we produced before on these uh, endothelial cell surface membranes. So here is E-selectin in red here, okay, and it will bind to uh, Cyalyl Lewis X on the surface of our uh, monocyte here. Okay, so this is Cyalyl Lewis X 
on the surface of the monocyte. And again, Cyanobacillus Lewis X is a small little sugar molecule uh, which will be attached onto uh, integral membrane proteins and the E-selectin will bind to that. So the monocyte will roll over the endothelial cells and it will continuously form and break these interactions between Cyanobacillus Lewis X molecules and E-selectin. Okay, now what will then follow is a weak, um, weak adhesion, okay, between uh, the uh, monocyte and the endothelium, okay, and this will involve an interaction between uh, the endothelial cell and the uh, monocyte, and what will happen is that I'm going to need to draw another one of these, so in fact I might have to draw this down here instead. Okay, so let me start another picture because it simply hasn't got the space to put on the E-selectin as well. Okay, so let's draw a rather longer endothelial cell. We can't go wrong with this one now. Okay, and um, what's going to happen is if we draw a nice long monocyte as well so that we've got lots of space to work with, you, what's going to happen is the firstly the monocyte is going to come to a halt, okay, and then it will have interactions between E-selectin, which I'll continue to draw here in red, and the Cyanobacillus Lewis X, which I'll continue to draw here on green, okay, and let me give the monocyte a nucleus here. Okay, right, then what starts to happen is you get weak interactions between uh, ICAM1 here in yellow, okay, so here in yellow is ICAM1, and it's uh, the molecule which it binds to on the monocyte, which is again uh, LFA1, the lymphocyte function associated uh, antigen 1, okay, which we'll have here in vivid purple, so let's label some of these up. So this is the integrin LFA1, one, remember, which stands for lymphocyte function associated antigen 1, which is the alpha L beta 2 integrin. Okay, and this is the immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecule, ICAM1, which remember stands for intercellular adhesion molecule 1. This is the selectin. Uh, E-selectin, which is in the selectin family of cell adhesion molecules, which is then binding to Cyanobacillus Lewis X, which is not a uh, cell adhesion molecule. So this is Cyanobacillus Lewis X. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, let's continue this discussion on. So what's next going to happen is that you're also going to get interactions uh, between uh, the um, between the VCAM1 and another integrin that's on the surface of the monocytes. Let me show this here. Okay, so this is all part of the weak adhesion at the moment, okay? So we've now got our VCAM1, which is our vascular cell adhesion molecule 1, still on the surface of the endothelial cell here, and it's going to bind to another integrin cell adhesion molecule on the surface of our uh, monocyte here, and we'll have this integrin cell adhesion molecule in orange. Okay, now this integrin cell adhesion molecule that's in orange and is on the surface of the monocyte, this is known as VLA4, which stands for uh, Very Late Antigen 4. Okay, so again, Very Late Antigen 4 is an integrin cell adhesion molecule, so it consists of both a um, an alpha subunit and a beta subunit. Now its composition is alpha 4, beta 1. So remember there are 18 different um, alpha subunits that you can use to construct an integrin and 8 different beta subunits. So we've specifically picked the alpha 4 of those 18 and the beta 1 to make this integrin, put them together and we've got VLA4. Okay, so the first process in the um, extravasation of these monocytes then was the rolling, where we had the uh, forming and breaking of these interactions between Cyanobacillus Lewis X on the monocyte and E-selectin on the surface of the endothelium. 
Then the second process is that we get this weak adhesion uh, where we have interactions between the ICAM1 and VCAM1 on the surface of the endothelial cell with LIFO1 and VLA4 uh, respectively, which are integrin cell adhesion molecules on the surface of the monocyte. Okay. Now these integrins are not yet activated, so this interaction is very weak, but it does hold uh, the monocyte to the endothelium. Okay, to get um, the interaction to become a tight adhesion, what you need is integrin activation, and this is going to uh, be undertaken by the CC chemokine. So here is our CCL2, our CC chemokine ligand 2, uh, which remember is mounted on the glycocalyx here, and we'll have it in, I think we'll have it in red, I don't think we've used red yet. So here is red, okay and we'll have it bound to the CC chemokine receptor 2, so CCR2 here, okay, which we'll colour in in blue. Okay, now when CC uh, chemokine ligand 2 on the endothelial cell binds to the CC chemokine receptor 2 on the endothelial, uh, sorry, on the monocyte, that's going to cause an intra- uh, intracellular uh, signaling cascade, which is going to lead to the activation of both the uh, LIFA1 uh, integrin and also the VLA4 integrin, and that's going to result in these uh, bonds between these uh, VCAM1 and ICAM1 and the integrins becoming much stronger. So the bond between ICAM1 and LIFA1 will become strong, and the bond between VCAM1 and VLA4 will become stronger. And this will lead to a tight adhesion. So you're going to get tight adhesion of uh, the monocyte to the endothelium. Then what will happen is you'll get diapodesis, and this process is the same as before. So it will sliver uh, between the gap in the uh, endothelium, and when it does that, it will have interactions between PCAM1 on its surface and the PCAM1 that's on the surface of the endothelium uh, that lines that gap between the two endothelial cells. Okay, and that's how you recruit these monocytes into the interstitial fluid uh, of the site of the infection. And what will then happen is these monocytes will differentiate into macrophages, and those macrophages will go forth and kill the pathogen. Okay, and that's how you uh, extravasate uh, neutrophils in both type 1 and type 2 activation, and then in type 2 activation later on, how you extravasate monocytes.